Hey guys, uh, Thomas from Burgundy. Hope you're all doing good. This is my third video on Burgundy wines. Uh, if you haven't seen the uh, previous two, uh, check them out. You should. And uh, else, name is Thomas. Been living here in Burgundy for now 12, going on 13 years, and working for just as long in the wine industry. Uh, until not that long ago, I was um, I was into uh, exports. Had to quit my job for family reasons and have been working as a wine guide here in Burgundy ever since. Anyway, um, that's how I got to meet that remarkable chap, uh, Gabriel, is a uh, psalm by trade and education. And Gabby runs that private wine club uh, for the south in, in, um, in Burgundy called La Cave Rive. Uh, so before that whole quarantine stuff started, uh, he just came by my house, gave me, uh, well gave me, entrusted me with three different bottles. Uh, obviously there were strings attached, he just asked me to come up with a video on the wines. So I, I complied, already did two of them. Uh, one was on a uh, white um, a Pellini Montrachet from the southern part of Burgundy. Uh, interesting wine, personality, though on the um, oxidative side if I may judge. Um, the last one was a simple, basic village uh, Chardonnay, enjoyable. And we're now gonna go for something entirely different. A, we're changing color, we're going red, so Pinot Noir, because you guys might remember, Burgundy essentially boils down to two varietals, Chardonnay for the white wines, Pinot Noir for the red wines. And, I mean, there are exceptions, you don't have to, uh, you don't have to mind them just now. So anyway, this here is one of my favorite areas in, in Burgundy. It's, um, so you can see again, you just check out on the label, you go for the bigger letters, uh, fonts. That'll be the, what the French call appellation, appellation. So it's the area where it comes from. Corton is a, um, is a pretty unique place. Corton, it, well, it's, it's sort of a U-shaped hill, like a horseshoe um, shape of a hill. Um, it is the only area in Burgundy that has both a white and a red Grand Cru, so the top of the pyramid in the classification. And obviously being a U-shaped hill, it's not all east facing. So you have vines on the southern part, um, so you you might know some of them. The um, world, world famous uh, Corton Charlemagne is one of those white Grand Crus. And on the eastern slopes, they have Pinot Noir based Grand Cru. So that's one of them. Uh, another specific aspect of Corton is that the soils are rather specific to the area. It's a sticky, reddish type of a uh, clay. It, it, it's just packed with iron oxide, hence the color. Uh, so it's a very sticky clay, as I was telling you, a cold type of soil, and it, it does convey very specific traits to, the, to that um, wine. They tend to be on the animally side. Uh, they have that leathery nature to them that I absolutely love. They are fantastic over me, but let's give it a shot. So just checking out the label again. Corton would be the Appalachian Grand Crudes classification. And Domaine Maillard just here, Paraphis, Paraphis stands for father and son. Uh, so that would be the producer. And that's a 2016. Uh, 2016, 2016 was an unusual vintage. It was, it was a difficult vintage, if any, thing. Uh, Anything that could go wrong in 2016 went wrong. We had we had hail uh, late April. It I mean it destroyed up to 80 percent of the grapes and buds in the fields in certain areas. Uh, then we had we had rot, mildew, and then we had nonstop rain throughout uh, early summer. So what was left was super good and super concentrated, but it came in super small quantities. Um, so be on the lookout for the 2016. Some might be on the expensive side, if only because the volumes were so low, but they tend to be extremely good. Now, 2016 for a Grand Cru, we're now in 2020, so that's only four years. That is on the youngish side, um, but nonetheless, Cortones tend to be quite enjoyable relatively early in their lifespan. So let's give it a shot. Oops. Um, so it's a pretty classic crimson uh, Pinot Noir type of the car. On the, on the rather intense side though, I, I don't know how good my camera is, uh, Pinot Noirs tend to, in Burgundy please, tend to be on the, on the lighter side color-wise. Uh, by no means would that entail that wine is 
just nugget or it doesn't taste like much. Uh, it's just the way they are. Um, and Burgundy also tends to harvest their Pinots relatively earlier than in other areas, such as California or New Zealand, for different reasons, mostly related to the acidity and sugar balance. Um, let's give it a shot. Oh, I, I wish you guys could smell that. It's, um, that is as burgundy as it gets. That is the quintessential burgundy Pinot smell. It, it's just all about fruits. You get that super concentrated um, black currants, um, red berries in general type of vibe to it. It's, well, um, sort of hinting towards a wine with a relatively high acidity. Not that you can smell acidity, but that sort of smell is usually related to wines with a higher acidity, which is for Burgundy a good thing because we like acidities. Acidities are they're what gives your your wine the uh, ability to age, sort of the um, the backbone of your wine. I'm just salivating. Mm. Mm. Forgot this between. Um, again, of all the wines that Gabby, uh, Gabby just brought me, this is by all means the the most flattering. And it, oh, I'm I'm still having my wife taste that after. Um, it's it's concentrated. The uh, the tannins are you can feel them. They're 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 here. Uh, they're on your tongue. There is a slight astringency to the wine, but nonetheless, they're relatively silky. Uh, the tannins will tend to soften up with time. I am positive that, give it another couple of years, that'll be just pure silk. Um, as I call it, a baby Jesus in velvet pants. Um, and this is just absolutely wonderful. As a general rule, you do not decant your burgundy pinots. I would not recommend decanting that one, but it absolutely needs breathing a little bit because it's so concentrated. Um, so what stands out in that Corton it to you again, Corteon 2016 uh, Maillard Perifis, is that obvious in your face fruitiness. The uh, freshness of it, the balance overall is just quite perfect for me. The tannins on the uh, texture side are very flattering. Uh, I would still hold on to that for another year or so, or just let it breathe maybe just an hour or so. Uh, and it'll be perfect with any sort of a T-bone or meat you may want to have. Um, so look them up. As a general comment, I would tell you that Corton are the best value you can get in Burgundy for Grand Cru's. They tend to be the most affordable Grand Cru's in, in, in all Burgundy. Uh, they usually retail $150 uh, back, back in the US, uh, less than $100 uh, euros in, in, in France. Um, give them a shot. They are absolutely wonderful and there's a variety of them. I'm gonna be sipping on that. Cheers, all the best. And so that's the end of the video guys. Really hope you enjoyed it. Uh, just as a side note, our wines are so available for home delivery if you're interested so just click on the link in the description. And finally, for any suggestions or comments or any thoughts, uh, make sure to drop us a comment down below. We would love to uh, chat further with you guys. And last but not least, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and press the bell icon for regular updates. Talk soon, guys.